A lot of people are involved in idolatry and idol worship and they don't know it. Mark 12 verse 29 and 30 And Jesus answered him, The first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. Jesus summarized the whole law into one basic commandment, love. First, our love must be vertical, and second, our love must be horizontal. That is, our love must be vertical towards God, first of all, and then horizontal towards humanity. Matthew 22 verse 37 to 40 Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. We are not permitted to love anything else until we have loved God with all our hearts, with all our souls, and with all our strength. Unfortunately, the reverse is the case with many people. Only very few people put God first in their lives. If you do not prioritize God in your life, you are an idol worshiper. Whatever takes the place of God in your life is an idol regardless of its shape and form. We live in a generation full of idols. There are a number of different 21st century gods. There is the god of money. This may sound strange to you, but there are people who quite literally worship money. How can I know that money is my god? When you find yourself compromising on God's word in order for you to get more money, know this, money is your God. When you find yourself going against the conscience that God has placed inside of you, know this, money is your God. When your safety, security and faith is based in money and not God Almighty, know this, money is your God. There is the God of sex in this generation. People quite literally worship at the altar of sex and sexual immorality. The constitution of marriage is no longer respected. I know men and women whose lives are quite literally dictated by lust. Every single one of their life's decisions is made based on lust because the god of sex has become their idol. They decide not to get married or they push marriage as far back as possible so that they can live a promiscuous lifestyle. The god of lust is a real thing. People step out of their marriages because of lust. Brothers and sisters, I Idolatry is not going on your hands and knees in a forest, bowing down to a statue. Idolatry is what takes the place of God in your life. Idolatry in this dispensation have gone way off bowing down to a graven image or a molten calf. It is beyond offering sacrifices of blood to physical idols. Many believers practice idolatry and they are the least aware of it. They have relegated idolatry to the worship of physical images. Little did they know that the devil is also advancing in his scheme. In fact, the form of idolatry that exists in this dispensation is worse than the one being practiced in the Bible, where people bow down to physical substances. Back then, people could be physically separated from their idols, but in our day, a believer could have an idol right there in their hearts and travel with it everywhere they go. We run up against the sin of idolatry every day because we are tempted to worship at the altar of things and other people rather than God. Do you realize that many people seek the things of God above the God of things? When you exalt the creations of God above the Creator Himself, then your priorities have been misplaced. This is exactly how many of us relate with God. Meanwhile, our God is a jealous God. He wants to sit right at the center of our hearts. 
Anything you exalt above God would become an idol to you. It is unfortunate that several believers have their jobs as their idols, and they are least aware of it. They love their jobs more than they love the Lord. They respect and honor their bosses more than they honor and respect God and His ministers. Many believers will not dare to go late to work, but they will plan to come late to the presence of God. They will plan to attend church late, what many would not do at work. They will dare to do in God's presence. If you fear your boss more than you fear God, your boss has become your idol. If you fear to lose your job, but care less about losing your relationship with God, then your job is the idol you have set before yourself. There are people who can spend the whole day pursuing the progress of their businesses, but would doze off 10 minutes into their prayer time. If you use all your energy to seek for what will benefit you, and you return with a worn out body to seek God, you have relegated God to the background and you have become an idol worshipper. If you are too busy for God, I am sorry to tell you, but you have an idol in your life. There is an idol called TV. People are willing to spend four hours watching TV, but cannot spend ten minutes praying to God. The devil loves it when you go to church, but your affection is not really set on God. The devil knows that if God is not God over all in your life, then he is not God at all in your life. Whatever rivals with God in your life is an idol you must deal with. Don't be surprised that your spouse and children can be the idol you are worshipping. Yes, I know that God commands husbands to love their wives the same way Christ loves the church and gave himself for her. But we must put God where he belongs and put every other thing in our lives where they belong. God is love. Your love for God will never rob you of your love for your family. But your love for your spouse and children can rob you of your love for God if care is not taken. That is the reason Jesus said anyone who will follow him must hate his wife, father, mother, children and the like to become his disciples. Luke 14 verse 26 If anyone comes to me and does not hate father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, even their own life, such a person cannot be my disciple. In order to be a disciple, we must be willing to give up everything for Jesus. Following Jesus requires commitment and faithfulness. Even if our parents choose not to follow the Lord, other relationships are definitely of lower priority than faithfulness and obedience to Jesus. This was an audacious demand. None of the prophets or apostles asked for such personal commitment and devotion. If Jesus was not and is not God, this would be idolatry. But because Jesus is God, this is not idolatry. What Jesus implied is that we must love God above everything else, regardless of what they represent in our lives, and then the love of God will follow to other areas. Matthew 6 verse 21 says that where the treasure of a man is, there will his heart be also. This is how to judge the idol you are serving. Examine your life today. What takes your affection? What do you spend the most of your time doing? If you find the correct answers to these questions, then you can truly judge whether you have an idol in your life or not. If the time you give to seeking pleasure exceeds the time you spend in seeking God, then you probably have pleasure as the idol you need to deal with. Your appetite can also be your God, according to Philippians 3 verse 18 and 19 which reads, For many walk of whom I have told you often, and now tell you even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things, any earthly things that people
people mind and pursue and place above God is an idol. We need to pray the prayer of David in Psalm 139 verse 23 and 24 which says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts and see if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. It could be that you have nurtured an idol in your life over the years and you are not aware. Can God make demand for anything in your life and you will freely release it without questioning him? This is the extent to which we are expected to love God and place him above everything else in our lives.